produce soot, doesn't produce smoke and all that. And then it's very easy to use. And then our raw material is actually cow dung and solid waste, which makes it economical because it's something that is very much available. Um, what informed our product choice? Of course, we didn't just wake up one morning and decide that we want to start producing this product. Our product choice was informed by one, the need for an efficient and cost-effective waste management system. You know, in Nigeria, most homes, in fact, about 70% of Nigerians live in areas where they do not have a good um, waste collection system. There's no waste treatment, you know, and all that. So we are looking for an efficient and cost-effective way to treat waste. What do we do with it? We use it. I mean, nothing in the environment is to be wasted. And that's why we want to go into using cow dung and solid waste. You know, people um, use so many things in the kitchen, they just throw them away. But we are going to be using this thing to produce um, cooking gas and organic fertilizer, which is really going to help us. Now, the other one is the demand for clean and cheaper fuel to meet our energy needs. We, some persons, to use um, firewood, kerosene, and all the rest. We want to contribute to meeting Nigeria's energy needs because it is part of what we talk about, economic security. And we need to talk about the need for improved agricultural yields, quantity and quality using sustainable agricultural practices. Now in Nigeria, we import a lot of the food we need. We want to be able to encourage farmers to produce more so that we can be able to meet the nutritional needs of Nigerians. We want to produce our own food. We want to produce enough raw materials for industries to use. How do we achieve this? By providing organic fertilizers to farmers, something that's going to help them to increase their yield. And not just that, we're also looking at environmental sustainability. Why? Because organic fertilizers are much better than inorganic fertilizers in the sense that they help to preserve our soil. Inorganic fertilizers have the adverse effect of reducing us, degrading our soil. But organic fertilizers wouldn't do that. So that's one of the reasons. And availability of raw materials. These are things you went to Sokoto. The cow dongs were everywhere you agree with me. And there are so many places where waste is just dumped anyhow. They don't use it for anything. It contributes to, for instance, we had a, a recent incident with cholera, you know, um, an epidemic that broke out. Why? Because waste is not properly treated. And we really want to harness these raw materials. Rather than waste them, we want to use them to produce something better. And then we'll talk about our commitment to improving the quality of life of the Nigerian people. To our company, we're going to be creating job employment for a lot of youth. Currently in Nigeria, we are looking at so many youth are into youth unrest. So many things are happening. They are going to kidnapping and all that. Why? Because there are no employment. And this is one of the ways we want to use to create um, job employment for people. Now, talking about our production process, how are we going to get our, bio, our biogas, of course, and our organic fertilizer? Now, if you look there, you're going to see the substrate, that the cow dung, and the food waste. We send it to the digester, take it to the, this thing, and then from there, we'll be able to produce our biogas and organic fertilizer. I'm going to call on our marketing director to come and tell us more about our marketing strategies. Thank you very much. My name is Icha, Mike Icha. I'm the Executive Director, Marketing and Promotion, Evergreen Corporation. Our target market encompasses all Nigerians. You agree with me that in every Nigerian home there is a cooking pot, there is a kitchen, and everybody use, utilizes some form of energy for production of, some form of fuel for production of energy required for cooking. So we are targeting all Nigerians as our market base. Now, Nigerians can be categorized based on economy, based on energy, uh, energy consumption patterns. Nigerians can be categorized into three categories, and these patterns also reflect the income and the purchasing power of Nigerians. In the lower class, we have people that use firewood. In the middle class, there are people that use both firewood, kerosene, and liquefied petroleum gas, and this depends on whether it's the upper middle class or the lower middle class. And then in the upper class, most people use liquefied petroleum gas as their source of energy for cooking. Now, that is for biogas, and our estimated market share, we are targeting a market share of 50%. We want to capture 50% of the populace uh, based on our product. Organic fertilizer, the target market is farmers in Nigeria, all farmers, whether commercial farming or subsistence farming. And 
our estimated cap, uh, market share is 40%. We're also targeting 40% of the population as uh, what we want to capture with our product. Let me dwell a little on how um, firewood, kerosene, and other sources of fuels degrade the environment and constitute health hazards to our people. And at the point, I, firewood is obtained by falling down trees. And when trees are falling down, uh, we, decrease, we decrease the the greenery of the environment. By that I mean the number of trees. Trees remove carbon dioxide from the environment for photosynthesis. And by falling down trees, the content of carbon dioxide in the environment increases. Carbon dioxide has the capacity of retaining heat, and this contributes to global warming, which has far-reaching effects on the people. Then the second thing is that firewood and kerosene as fuels for combustion undergo incomplete combustion processes. That is to say that not all the energy is burned up in the process and a lot of smoke and carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere which also contributes to the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere. This smoke is actually very, very dangerous to the health of especially children below five years of age. So our promotional strategy really is to provide this information to the public, every household, every home in Nigeria, give them this needed information so, so that they will accept our product, which is biogas, and clamp down on firewood as a source of energy for fuel. as far as I'm concerned, have addressed uh, to a great extent all the key variables of a good business plan. But I have some specific comments that I would like to make in respect of each company, uh, so please uh, take note. Uh, Achievers Company, uh, your vision is not particularly clear. You need to look at your vision again. Uh, your startup capital of 25 million uh, for me appears too big for a micro enterprise. Uh, BHA, what you presented at Vision ought to be your mission. And what you presented as mission ought to be your vision. Uh, you need to revisit that because it is very important. Uh, you, when you were discussing your distribution channel, you mentioned the website. I really uh, thought maybe you were talking about advertisement. You know, website can be a good channel, but certainly not as a distribution channel. Uh, so please take note of that. Uh, also look at your startup capital. Uh, I think it's not realistic for a micro enterprise. Colossus, uh, your vision is more of a mission. Uh, consider that again. Uh, be specific about your location in Niger State. You said Niger State, 
Where do you want to locate your company in Niger State? Is it MENA? Is it BIDA? Or where? Or is it in all the local governments in Niger State? You need to be specific. Uh, Dynamics Limited. I don't know whether it's me who didn't see the slide, but I didn't see any vision. I didn't see any mission. Uh, but I think you were realistic in your startup capital. Uh, Evergreen, you were also realistic in your startup capital. Now, for general comments, uh, I would like to see a situation where you all improve on your executive uh, summary. Uh, the reason being that when you send your proposal uh, to someone who is very busy, he should be able to understand uh, uh, the, the basics you know, of your proposal in the executive summary, the highlights. Um, I've noticed that most of you uh, give the mission and vision before you give the executive summary. Your vision and mission should be captured in your executive summary. It is very important. So uh, see how you can improve on your executive summary. When you take your proposal to someone who is very busy, uh, by looking at your executive summary, he should be able to have the gist of what you are trying to propose. I've also uh, discovered that uh, maybe for one or two companies, I think Achievers and BHA, the, I didn't see the use of logo and slogan. And um, these are very powerful tools for marketing. Uh, so please always consider, you know, logo. Logo is very important. And then, of course, your slogan. Every company should have a slogan or a motto uh, because that is where you begin to, to attract, you know, people. Uh, so please uh, see what you can do about that. Uh, your startup capital should always be realistic. Uh, the principle here is that always think big but start small. Uh, there is a very, very powerful writer called Esther Bossero. She says, small is beautiful. So when you start small, it's better, and then you grow. But don't start big, and then you begin to fall. I think these are my comments, but finally, let me congratulate all of you. I've enjoyed all the presentations. Thank you very much. <laughs>